welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast today. I am privileged to have my mother, Peggy Caps, with me today. Mom, thanks for doing it. Well, you're very <laughs> welcome. <laughs> uh, today we're going to be talking about doctors, medicine, and prayer. What a combination, and probably a controversial subject Somewhat. in many circles. So. I really feel like it's important, though, because so, we get so many letters and so many people asking us about, should I go to a doctor? Should I do this? What should I do? And if I go to a doctor, what does that mean I'm not believing God? Oh, we just get lots and lots of questions, and so Mom and I are going to be talking about that today. But right now, I'd like for you to see a clip from my father, Charles Capps, talking about this subject. And uh, he could always say it like nobody else. <laughs> That's true. So let's take a look at what he said. But you see, God will never say no to something he's already given you. If faith is there and you call for it and you hold fast to the word. Now don't, now don't read something into this that I didn't say. I didn't say go throw your medicine away. Now, I've said this and I'm going to say it again. Medicine won't heal you, and it won't keep you from getting healed. But it'll sure keep the symptoms down so you can believe God for your healing. Are you still out there? If you're taking medicine, take it in the name of Jesus. And it'll work twice as good. Take your medicine in the name of Jesus, and it'll work twice as good. <laughs> I like that. <clears throat> I do, too. <laughs> you know, Dad was always very practical. Yes. He was never one to just throw you out there and leave you out there swimming. You know, I remember hearing about people that in order to teach their kids to swim, they just pitch them in the swimming pool. <laughs> you know, well, that, that might work and it might not work. So yeah. we want to help you today learn to swim. We don't want to throw you out in the pool and just leave you because obviously, you know, the Word of God tells us that Jesus himself bore our sicknesses. He carried our diseases and by his stripes, we were healed. Not just are healed, we were healed. And yet many Christians and many people are, don't have the appearance of healing and wholeness. So we want to talk today about these sort of things. And I want to just start out maybe by uh, mentioning a, a letter or two that we have received because it is, um, I think, helpful to do so. We had a letter from someone and, and they asked us that, you know, is it wrong for me to get medical treatment? The doctor told, tells me I need medication. Maybe I need medication for high blood pressure. Is it wrong for me to seek medical help? And, you know, it's amazing that people really have that idea that it's wrong to seek medical help. If you hadn't sought medical help, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> you wouldn't be here, and I wouldn't have my mother, mother with me today. That's true. So there's a, a stigma attached um, with word faith people. If you're a faith person, if you're believing God for healing, there somehow is a stigma attached uh, that if you go get medical help, you really don't have faith. And I believe nothing could be further from the truth. I do too. So. But before we get into a lot of that, I, I, where did these people get the idea that it's wrong to go to doctors? And, and the only place that I can really find it is in Second Chronicles 16, and it's talking about King Asa. And mostly what happens is people pull out the scripture, Second Chronicles 16, 12, says, and in the 39th year of his reign, that's King Asa, Asa became diseased in his feet, and his malady was severe. Yet in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. So Asa rested with his fathers. He died in the 41st year of his reign. So people take that scripture and say, see, 
he went to a physician and he died. Well, that was before <laughs> Jesus came and paid for our healing. Well, that and, doesn't have anything to do with. <laughs> thank you, Mother. <laughs> with what you Good Jesus. point. <laughs> It doesn't have anything to do with it. Well, but if we're going to get just really down to it, why, why don't, you know, always interpret Scripture by Scripture. Look at the surrounding passages. First of all, it didn't say, which is what got, a lot of people interpret this as, that God killed him because he went to a physician. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not what it says. It says that he became, his malady or his illness was severe and yet he did not seek the Lord. Whoa. He did not <laughs> seek the Lord. Well, we find out when we look. If you want to go back, we're not going to go through the whole story right now. But Asa started, and when he started, he followed the Lord. He listened to the Lord. He did what the Lord told him to do. And then he veered off path, and he started doing what he wanted to do. He didn't listen to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he did not <laughs> seek the Lord's guidance on things. And this followed in his life. You see, people take one instance and say, well, see what happened, you know. No, look at, look at his life and, his, and the whole instance. He quit listening to the Lord. Right. And that's the one thing I want to say that is so important in your testimony of having the liver transplant and sitting here in health today. The Lord spoke to you yeah, and he did. told you <laughs> Through that to story. have that transplant. He did. Now, we're not saying by sitting here today, and we're talking about doctors, medicine, prayer, we're not saying to you that you should go do the first thing a doctor recommends, that you should do the same thing mother do, did. We're not saying that to you. We're saying that you should pray and ask God what you should do. If you're highly developed in faith and have complete and total confidence that you are healed, then you go as far as your faith will take you. That's right. That's right. John Lake made a statement in one of his books that I, I relied on, I think, all during the time that I was going through this. I had read, he made the statement that he didn't know where some people got the information that uh, you couldn't take medicine or you couldn't do things like that. And he said, the scripture says, be ye therefore perfect, even as Jesus was perfect. And that means, he said, that you should do everything you can and start climbing that ladder to perfection in Christ. And you may get one rung up and something may happen to where you miss it, but you go on and you correct that and you go. And I could see myself climbing that ladder step by step. When things would happen, I would miss, I'd say, okay, I'm still going, I'm still going. And he said, even if you only get halfway <clears throat> to the goal of being as perfect as Jesus was perfect, and that is talking about in his everyday life, you know, of course, we all know we're not going to be completely as perfect. He was the only one that was ever perfect in that sense. But we can keep striving and keep improving and climbing towards that goal by doing what the Word tells us to do. And that helps us get that way, get on up that ladder to being like Jesus. You know, He's provided, Jesus provided our healing. By Jesus' stripes, we were wow. healed. And so wow. our job is to figure out how to receive and how to act on the Word to make that true in our bodies that we have. Right. And that is by, sometimes I kind of compare it to a seed. You know, Charles talked so much about seed because he was a farmer. He was used to planting seed and taking care of the seed. Well, healing, you can kind of say, is kind of like that seed. You plant that seed, you get prayed for, or you talk to pray and ask the Lord to heal your body and begin to use your faith in that respect. And that little seed comes up. And when it first comes up, in fact, today as we were driving to the studio, I saw fields. They were, you know, just about that high, the little soybean seeds. And, you know, if you don't take care of that seed, you know what's going to happen? It's going to wither and die. Grass will grow up around it and choke it out. 
And that's that's even in the Bible said, you know, yes. the cares the Lord will choke it out. Okay. And so you have to be very careful and not let things of the world choke out your seed of healing. You've got to take care of that seed. You have to take care of your body. You can't go around and mistreat your body and expect it to be well. It won't be well. This is a natural world that we live in. Live in. So therefore, there are certain things that we have to do to receive healing and keep our healing. And we can't just do anything we want to and disobey what God tells us to do. If yeah. we don't live obedient to the Word, you can't expect the promise. And you know, sometimes preachers are the worst about taking care of themselves of anybody, you know. Well. <laughs> oh, it's okay, I've got the anointing, I'm gonna go out there, you know, well, you know, yes, you have the anointing and we have a physical body and we have to live in it, like you say. So, you know, Dad really did some excellent teaching uh, along that line and we can't get everything in just in a few minutes, you know, that we're on this program, but I want to, to mention that we have a, a CD that we're going to be offering today called Your Faith Will Make You Whole by Charles Capps, my father. And then we're the Endless Confessions on Healing. And you know how many people have bought that because you can put it in a hospital right. room, you put it on your uh, uh, CD player, and if you put it on repeat, it plays over and over and over until, you know, days, weeks, and months, you'll be playing the Word of God mm -hmm. and the confessions of the Word. And then the uh, activating the power of God in your body, a free pamphlet. So we're going to be offering that today. So it's uh, really important, like you said, to keep that seed, plant the seed of the Word of God and nourish it by continuing to speak it, to make sure that you get rid of the things that could be causing harm. And then mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that we, we, we want to go back to in your healing and in your health, let's just say your health, because there have been more than one situation with your health, not just your liver, but other things have happened. And we prayed about the doctors you went to. Sure. I mean, we prayed and we asked God to give us the wisdom of God to put you with the doctors that had the wisdom to restore right. you to health. We call the end result. The That's end right. result was health. Right. The journey, how you <clears throat> got to health is not as important as the end result. But along the journey, there were people, there were doctors, there were nurses, sure. there were insurance people, there were all kinds of things. I, I remember when you were having the, uh, the surgery, we were praying that and I still give this to people today. If you're, if you're going in the hospital and you're having surgery, then make this confession in the name of Jesus. I thank you that the anointing of God is upon every doctor, every nurse, every person that touches my body this day is anointed of God and that they will operate in the wisdom of God this day and everything that is done to bring me to health. That's right, very important. Lots of people were involved. You know, we talked about uh, Oral Roberts' last program, and we uh, were talking about, he said, there's no separation between the natural and the supernatural. That's what he and said. And he was talking about medicine and doctors. Mm -hmm. He was healed, he, re he, he was healed of tuberculosis and became whole, and yet he utilized doctors to keep him well and healthy. Yep. There was no sin in that. And that's one of the reasons we want to come on this <clears throat> program today is for those of you that have judged yourself, others have judged you, you've condemned yourself. Well, you know, I had to go to the doctor, my faith didn't work. You know, I've heard, I've heard it all. Uh, don't be condemned. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. If you're following the Spirit of God, if you're doing the best you can, and it's not enough, you haven't gotten to that place, and you need medical help, then pray about what you should do about it. And if God says you need to go see a doctor, pray about what doctor you should see. If, if you feel that, uh, that medicine is necessary, then pray about the medicine and then lay hands on that medicine yeah. and take it in the name of Jesus. You know, 
you know, Mom, I think in a way we're kind of alike. We don't like to take medications, anything. <laughs> Correct. You know, <laughs> we really don't. And um, I, uh, I had a real attitude about it, and that was one of the things that Brother Robert talked about was his attitude. I really had an attitude about it. I don't want to take, I'm not taking that <laughs> stuff, not taking that. And I had a, a situation, and so there was something I could take that would relieve the symptoms. And I'm not, t I'm not, I don't want to take that, I don't want to take that. And all of a sudden the Lord spoke to me. And what he said to me was kind of shocking. But he talked to me, he brought me over to uh, Acts chapter 10. And in Acts chapter 10, Cor there was a man named Cornelius and he had prayed and he was a giver, he was a prayer, and God spoke to him, taught, told him to call for Peter. Now Cornelius was a, 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 a Gentile, and Gentiles and Jews, you know, the Jews weren't going to have anything to do with the Gentiles, but God told Cornelius to call for Peter, yeah. told him where Peter lived, gave, gave him Peter's address. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> Can God do that? <laughs> Can God give God addresses? Well, he did in this case. He said, there's a man named Peter, and he's praying right now, and I'm talking to him, call for him. And so Peter was praying, and he was, he was hungry, and he had a vision. I've had visions when I was hungry, too. <laughs> I remember one time I was on a missions trip, and I wanted good food, and I fell asleep, and I was dreaming about a chocolate cake. Oh, my god. And goodness. I mean, in my dream, I was just opened my mouth to take that bite, mm. and I woke up, and no chocolate cake. But anyway, back to Peter. Peter was you know, praying, and he saw a sheet lowered down from heaven with all of these unclean animals and different things, and God said, Arise, Peter, kill and eat. Mm -hmm. And he said, Oh, not me, Lord, I'm religious. I've never eaten anything unclean. Nothing unclean's touched this body. And it happened three times. And you know, when it happened the third time, Peter said, You know, I think God's trying to tell me something. <laughs> So anyway, God used that story and he was trying to tell me something. And what he was telling me is, what I have cleansed, do not call common or unclean. And if God tells you, you need to take medication, then do not call it unclean and condemn yourself. Pray over it. Thank you, Lord, you've cleansed this. It produces only the results in my body that lead to health. That's right. And that's what God told me. Now, God may tell you, or somebody else, God may tell you, don't you take that medication. If he says that, then, you know, you need to talk to your doctor and, and pay attention if God's telling you that. But that, you know, Dad's talking about, I'd heard him say that before about take your medicine in the name of Jesus and it'll right. work twice as well. And then I just added the thing and it will produce no ill side effects. Well, where did the medicine come from? Well, everything comes from the earth and God made the earth. That's right. So, so why would that be bad? The only reason that it would be bad is if it's, if it's taken to not produce health. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so if it produces health, then that's a positive thing. And if God tells you that you need to do it, then you can do it without condemnation. That's right. But there's a lot of important pieces to this. Yeah, it's, it's a, a lot of things. I mean, you can't just step up and say this, you know, you can't do anything but this, or you can't do anything but that. That, that you know, there's too many things involved in healing and in your body. You know, you have to study and be sure you have all the pieces of the puzzle, so to speak, before you make any kind of statements like you can't take medicine or you should take medicine, or you can't go to a doctor, or maybe you should go to a doctor. Unfortunately, I have been acquainted with at least one person who would not go to a doctor, and we all had no idea of the problem that was in her body at the time. But she died, and after it was over, we were all in shock because we had no idea that she would not go to a doctor. Now, I do not know the reason, but I know that we were all very troubled because of the fact that she made that decision. She wasn't going to a doctor. Well, you know, I don't know what her reasons were, but I know that we were all very stunned and very hurt that she died. So, you know, you can't answer for everyone a certain way, but 
You need to do everything you can. God, Jesus came and died on the cross and suffered, shed his blood, had stripes on his back for our wholeness, our complete being. And so why would we refuse to take any method that he has provided for us? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take every, if I need to, I'm going to take every provision that he has made possible in this earth. And well, thank him for it. The Bible, you know, repeatedly tells us that <clears throat> life and death is our choice. Yeah. And choose life. Don't choose death. Right. Choose life. Right. And I believe that if you're really totally opposed to going to a doctor, if you pray and ask God, what should I do about mm -hmm. this? That if you're supposed to go, if you need medical help, God's going to tell you. Right. Just like yes. with your liver transplant, right. God said, well, you know, he gave you that sto yeah. funny story. I kind of compared to the lady I was telling you. Yes, <laughs> yes you, but, but you listen, you know, and, and this is where people say, well, I'm, I'm the blessed, I'm blessed, I'm redeemed of the Lord. And, and if your faith, you know, eventually your faith gets up there. You know, it, you have to start somewhere. Right. That's you can't true. start out believing for healing or a, a miracle liver. You can't, I mean, that's just, unless it's just a supernatural thing that happens, um, yeah, I'm going to stop because this just, just really a, a hit my mind about people, you know, play the lottery. <laughs> what is I, I hear people say, it? you know, I can't make my house payment, so they go buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> And, they, and, they're, and they're hoping, they, they're hoping that they're going to win the lottery and get all this money, you know, that that's going to be, meet their needs. And I, I think sometimes people do that with healing, too. It, it's like, okay, uh, I'm going to do step one, two, three, four. I've confessed the word three times a day for a month. I have, you know, done this. I've declared this. I've done this, and I've done that. And it hasn't happened, so I'm going to go to a healing meeting where somebody operates in the gifts of healing and maybe it'll happen then. Well, you know, going back to the lottery, you might win the lottery, but the chances are very, very <laughs> slim. slim. And you might find someone operating in a powerful anointing of healing where a gift of healing happens or a gift of working of miracles happen. You might find that. Mm -hmm. But one sure-fired way to be whole and to get healthy is through confession of the Word of God. It's not winning the lottery, though. <laughs> it's not right. winning the lottery of healing. Like, you know, God's up there. <clears throat> I have this picture of some people, and I, you know, God's up there in heaven, and He's got all these miracles and healings, and He just chooses to dole them out you know, and why was this one not healed? And why was that one? Because, you know, God's up there just choosing and doling it out. No. And it's not a matter of God didn't heal you or God's not going to heal you. The Bible clearly states that Jesus died for your sins. Salvation is an accomplished, finished work. You don't go around saying, God, why didn't you save so-and-so? God, why didn't you save this one? Why didn't you save that one? Because we know provision was made for salvation. All that person had to say is, Lord Jesus, I accept you into my life right now. I claim you as my Lord and Savior and give my life to you. And it's the same with healing. That's right. Jesus, he died not only for our sin, but our sickness at the same time. It's not a matter of, please God, heal me, please God, heal me. It's done. It's accomplished. It is finished. All that is needed is for you to accept and plant the seed of that word in your heart. It's not God up there doling things out. It's accomplished. And the, I think one of the biggest issues is our ability to receive. Mm -hmm. That's true. God is the source of all healing. God is the source of all health. Amen. He's the source. Yes. We don't look to doctors. We don't look to medicines That's as right. our source. 
we look at that as instruments to healing mm -hmm. and helping us, getting the symptoms down, but God is our source. Yes, He is. And Jesus has already healed us. Yes, thank you, He Jesus. is our you great sure physician, yes. the greatest physician, yes. the only doctor that knows what's really wrong with you and That's what right. really needs to be healed is Jesus Christ, the great physician. Amen. That's good preaching, even that if I did good. it. That's <laughs> good. That's so true. So true. Thank you, Jesus, for making that provision. Amen. So reach out as far as you can go. You know, um, just reach out as far as your faith will take you. And when your faith has reached it, then ask the Lord what you need to do next. It's just that simple. Well, we talked today about doctors, medicine, and prayer with the end result, of course, you being healed and living in health. Living in health means being whole, spirit, soul, and body. I have a CD here entitled, Your Faith Will Make You Whole. This is one of the best teachings by my father, Charles Capps. Be made whole. You know, Jesus asked the question, will you be made whole to the man at Bethesda? And he is asking that question to you today. Will you? Will you be whole? Faith in God and His Word and acting upon it will bring health. We also have a CD called Endless Confessions on Healing. This is a special CD that I ask our audio person to make for people to use in hospitals and other situations where they need the Word being confessed constantly without interruption. This has Charles Capps reading all the confessions from the book, God's Created Power for Healing. These two CDs are available for only $16 plus $4 shipping and handling in the U.S. I'm going also to include a free teaching pamphlet, Activating God's Power in Your Body. Many people know how to ask for healing, but need instructions on how to activate that power by acting out their faith. You can call now 1-877-396-9400. Ask for offer 2158. That's $16 plus $4 shipping in the United States. If you want to order these items separately, you can call and ask for individual pricing and shipping charges. We also have MP3 downloads and eBooks available on our website at caps.tv. Our goal is to get the good news of the Word of God out to you in every format because God wants you well. Join us on the next program as we continue this subject. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.